Hey guys, this is Chris Mills. I'm actually going to try and make my first ever video tutorial right now. As you can see here, I've got a simple sketch. Looks kind of like Shang Tsung from Mortal Kombat 2 or something like that. I don't know exactly. I just doodled this up real quick. Um, what I'm wanting to explain today is how to use the pencil tool for Illustrator and how I implement the tool for Illustrator. I am not very familiar with Photoshop and the brushes, so I stick with the Illustrator. That's all I know. Um, now with the pencil tool, it is very powerful. All of this sketch was done using the pencil tool. Some of those that are familiar with Illustrator know that when you draw a line with the pencil tool, that you'll get something like this. It might fill it in or something like that, so you can't do strokes. Well, you're wondering, well, how did I do this? This looks like it was just strokes. Um, it is, to an extent. I have taken the pencil tool and I have drawn each of these strokes. So instead of doing one curved line, I would go back along it and then just fill it in. So with that it, it looks pretty good. It doesn't look as you can see I do not have the steadiest of hands and whenever I come back it is not exactly how I like it but it still looks pretty good. Now the trick to that is using the fidelity settings in the pencil tool. So when you double tap on the tool the fidelity is what you're going to want to change. Now when you lower it to the lowest, it will do something similar to this. You see how my lines look together, and then whenever I come back, and they're not straight, it's going to retain that. So if you're looking for the more raw feeling, not so clean, that's perfect. You're still going to have a vector, it's still going to be scalable to whatever you would like. It's very useful for a lot of things. I just don't have the need for that too often. Small details, sure. When I need to have kind of like a bumpy surface, it looks great for that. In the meantime though, I'll just keep it at 2.5. I don't usually go any higher than that. 4 at the max, but rarely do I use 4. It just doesn't seem to follow it as well when I use it. Now with this, everyone's style is different. Mine is going to be kind of sketchy not as clean. I'm working on making it clean but still using the pencil tool the way I like to. So with this little character here we're gonna zoom in and I'm gonna show some other ways. Now you've probably seen some of my illustrations and I have a slight shade into it. Um, I use this from time to time but I use the pencil tool for it always still. Now with the pencil tool as well there is the settings in here let me bring it back up. For fill new pencil strokes, always keep that on. For me, can't use it any other way. Keep selected, no thank you. I don't like seeing my artwork selected. And at edit selected paths, I like to draw over the same spot several times to fill it in how I like when I don't get the right stroke the first time. So having this, when you draw over that same spot, if it's within this many pixels, it's just going to replace that previously drawn path. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Just keep it off. So now we're going to try and give some details here. Um, maybe we want to put some sort of shading on his head. I like to use the pencil tool to kind of stroke it in. So it gives a little texture and makes it have a little more depth just by doing that or if you're wanting to use it in another way you can kind of draw in the scratchy kind of shading round it off over here and it looks pretty good like that you can fill it in a little bit more by drawing over the same spot and there you go it works really well for that we'll do another one over here and then you can just draw a block first and then you can just scratch it in if you want. Now it does vary in its look. It just all depends on what you're going for. If you just want to put a little extra scratchiness on it, then go for it by all means. It's a very useful tool for it. I use it in that way all the time. And for my lines, all of these were drawn in by hand and sometimes I'll see a spot like over here I want to fill it in a little more 
so I'll go and draw in and then I'll draw it into the shape that I wanted it and now we've got it filled in just a little bit more clean up things a little bit more here real easy peasy um, another way that I like to do shading let me fill in this little spot it's bothering me is I like to grab the color so the hair's black we're gonna go with black and I'll make a new layer lock in my black layers and since this is going to be on top of these black fills I want to make sure that layers on top so we'll just say this color of gray will be slightly lighter than the color of the hair but not stark white and I will zoom in a little bit more for a lot of these most of the time and kind of do I guess anime has kind of told me about this like seeing different pictures it kind of just looks like the general shape of it but not quite touching its edge and then you just kind of draw it in a little bit more where you think the light would be see there you go you've got that all set with an eyebrow you want to kind of follow it but then you can kind of go scratchy a little bit towards the top and then follow it back adjusting with variance as you need it and then you've got that you know what I just thought about this thing this guy kinda looks like a Chinese Neo Cortex or what was his name from uh, Crash Bandicoot series it's crazy and that's not perfect it's art it's not gonna be perfect but that's the point you don't need it to be perfect you just want to fill it in how you feel it needs to be filled in I am just showing you how I use the tools and you guys can perfect on it do it however you want and you see those little highlights it really changes it quite a bit same with the mustache I pretend the lights in the top right hand corner for most of the images I do and that's where I imagine the lights where the highlights would be and then I just draw it in it's not perfect but it looks fantastic on its own to me and now with this you can you can kind of flatten it out more to make the mustache beard Fu Manchu thing not look so f so round but more on the flat side so with that I kind of scratch it in a little bit and then I'll scratch it in again keeping the scratches close together and then keeping them not so much lengthwise not too much length gives it more of a flat feel as things would be more rounded you would extend those strokes out more like so and it would make it feel like it's more rounded instead of because that's how, how the light would reflect I would imagine so with this um, we're gonna try and add the white now just minus the gray dot in his forehead right now we'll add the white and of course keep it all in separate layers just really helps with the white you don't need to do too much just a little more right there you can just throw a few scratches on for the white over the gray that works here there's not so much space so a few scratches and you can vary the direction that you go to kind of give it more depth too and sorry I know this is taking time but just hang with me there I will get you some more information this is just see this is the kind of thing that you'll run into I often run into it where I'm trying to do a stroke and my hand just kinda goes out of the way when you do a rounded stroke it's gonna look fat and you gotta kinda do it as straight as possible it, I love how it varies in the width it always changes it's never gonna be the same stroke every single time and it really feels good to do that you can do strokes differently and there you go you 
you can really make it look however you want and use it to your advantage. That's the point. If you want to have lines, just actual lines, then set it as a stroke, whatever you want to do, whenever you draw it in, there you go, you just have simple lines. You're not going to get the same fidelity as drawing it in yourself. It works to an extent, but I don't really like that because I can't fill in I can't just paint them in. It it take too much time. It's just easier to draw the shapes over the layers as I go. Now, say we wanted to change the color now that the black is there. We'll just go underneath the black layer, put a new layer underneath all of the artwork, keep everything else locked, and I, I'm going to make his hat red. Go with a red fill, no stroke, and then I'll just kind of trace right on the black lines. It's okay if you go out, you can erase these things. It won't mess it up the same way it does with the stroke. And look, just that easy. Filled it in, the entire color, vector. No painting, no messy paint strokes or anything like that. And you can do the same with every other color that you want to use. I don't know. I'm colorblind, so forgive me. I'm going to attempt this color. That's kind of a skinnish, skin like color, I would say. Um, and then since I'm under that red, we'll put another layer right underneath. There we go. And just kind of filling in the artwork. If your hand gets tired, just cut it off and go somewhere else. And now, because you can't reach it all, but you just got to cut it off. And make sure you're within your artwork, or otherwise, if you're trying to do it outside like this, and you get to this point and you just can't do it, let's see, right here, and then it'll cut across right on this outside. You don't want that. You, you doesn't really matter it's still filled in so you can just fill in this last little bit switch to the eraser or flip the pen over there you go you just erase that little spot quick and easy fill in the last bit here and there we go so you can just like do circles all in here to whatever it doesn't have to be neat oh no but I've gone over his eyes and his eyes don't need to be that color, so we'll just put a layer over that skin layer. <laughs> Once again, a lot of layers. We're going to just make them yellow just for the hell of it. And make sure you're drawn before you just decide to go through the entire process. Otherwise, you don't have anything. I don't like that, so I just hit undo. Sometimes it's just easier for me to go over it again. Okay, so with that, now you want to separate the artwork. Well, it's a vector. It's not exactly going to be that easy all the time. But with Illustrator, it does simplify things quite a bit. I like to do this before I export it to Photoshop. That way it's all separated. And Illustrator does put this little, fine, really small, thin line in between each color. So that way when it goes to print and you give them the vector artwork, it already has that little tiny line so it doesn't overlap each other. Now it doesn't do it as perfectly as some of the plugins would use, but it does work the same. So with this, Pathfinder tool is your friend. You're going to make sure all of your layers with your artwork are unlocked. Highlight all of them. Oh man, that is a lot of shapes, but that's okay. doesn't matter. We're going to use the Pathfinder tool, Divide. It's going to divide every color into its own separate spot. It's going to leave it exactly where it was, but it's all cut from each other. So any of those layers that were underneath colors are gone. It's just going to leave the artwork that is exposed. So now that everything's still selected, we're going to ungroup. Now this will take every bit of that artwork and put it onto one layer, which doesn't matter you're about to separate it all to its own individual layers 
So we'll ungroup it, deselect, we'll remove all these excess things that we don't want just floating about and now we just have our regular artwork so I like to start with black I'll select black it only selected this one piece but there's a million pieces that's okay you can either go to select same fill color or you can go up here to this little icon that says select similar objects and now it's going to select everything that's the exact same fill color since that's the only thing they all have in common if they had a different if they had a stroke it would select the things that had the same stroke it, it's easier to just choose select all fill color now when you hit add on the pathfinder oh sorry unite it's going to turn it all into its own separate shape so you control X to remove it and go to its own layer now here's the key don't just hit control V to paste it hold shift with control and press V and that will paste it into the exact spot you cut it from therefore you don't have to try and make everything back into the same place it was and you're going to misstep so much easier just to paste it right back into its own place there we go now it doesn't look any changed but it has it has changed quite a bit it's all on a separate layer now and fill color unite X there we go and then we're gonna go with the yellow and gray and whenever you're doing this it just it makes it easier for any printers that you have that you use it separated for them they don't have to do all that work so maybe they'll appreciate it maybe I'm just doing a lot of work but this is what I've done always it's just what I'm used to sorry I'm a bit slow today I haven't had enough coffee yet but I will get that later the white layer since this is a white background I don't bother I just leave the white out of it just drop the white off I cut it out but for the save file I will save it with all of that so we'll just go ahead and select all if there was a command that let me select by fill color that would be amazing but apparently I have not found one yet if anyone knows about these already and would like to tell me please do I would just tell me in the comments I would really like to know how to select fill color with a simple command and now everything separated to its own layer whenever you have them all separated it doesn't matter which order they go in because the artwork as you can see is all still the same nothing's changed I know this is getting pretty long so I'm gonna leave it there um, just have any questions let me know all of your artwork is gonna be there and you can see as the colors disappear nothing has changed and there you go export to Photoshop and all the layers will be separated if you want I don't I just flatten it all into one image and we'll talk to you later this is Chris Mills again thanks for watching my first video <laughs> bye